Welcome to the second video of our series, where we are going to firstly define the design space by specifying the eight different monopile geometry datasets, secondly generate and calculate the 3D models which correspond to each geometry dataset, and lastly calibrate the one-dimensional model based on the data retrieved from all eight 3D model results through parameterization. We start in calibration mode by adding all the needed geometry datasets using the Add button. From the geometrical characteristics that we fill in this table, we use the data presented in our manual. A common failure condition used in the design is that the ratio of lateral displacements to outer diameter equals 0.1, which means that the monopile is considered to fail when the horizontal displacement at the mud line reaches 10% of the outer diameter. However, the failure mechanism is commonly not completely developed at this value of displacement. Therefore, calibration requires the full development of plasticity in most of the soil reaction curves, for which we generally need to allow a higher relative displacement than the failure criterion. The suggested values for the relative target displacements at the mud line usually range between 0.15 and 0.30. In these tutorials, to get a calibration with good quality, we will be using a target displacement of 0.2 for all clay models and 0.15 for all sand models. Generally, we assume a specific design space consisting of many monopile geometries that define an envelope. We also expect our optimum or final monopile design to lie within that envelope. For this tutorial, the design space is defined by eight calibration models each corresponding to a Plaxis 3D project used to calibrate and parameterize the soil reaction curves. The image below illustrates the adapted design space and also presents the geometric dimensions for the assumed final design case. After we have defined our design space, we can select the first geometry dataset and generate the Plaxis 3D model by clicking the Generate button. This button will fire up Plaxis 3D and it will create our first model using the information defined in soil mode and calibration mode. As you can see, Plaxis 3D automatically generates the soil profile and the monopile geometry by executing a set of commands. Note here that Plaxis has created four different soil layers, and these layers represent the ones that we have created in soil mode in our previous video, and they adapt the constitutive models and material parameters that we have defined. After that, the program will generate the mesh and select two nodes on either side of the monopile at the elevation of the mud line. These points are necessary to visualize our results. Lastly, Plaxis will create the required calculation phases before switching back to the monopile designer. Note that the generation of a model will save the project automatically. The green check mark shows that the model has been successfully generated. We can now inspect our model in Plaxis 3D by clicking the View button. We get this message which informs us that any manual changes to the project may lead to inaccurate results and as we do not intend to make any changes, we press the Yes button to continue. We then go to the Structures mode where we can verify the consistency of the monopile's geometry. We see that the height above the ground level is 25 meters, which is equal to what we have defined in the geometry dataset. The same applies to the embedded length of the monopile, which is equal to 15 meters. Now let's inspect the soil and interface materials. First, we see that our list consists of four soil materials and their corresponding interface materials. Let's check the material of the first layer. 
we see that the constitutive model assigned is the NGI ADP model with an undrained C drainage type. And we can move to the parameters tab where we can validate the generated material properties. For more information on these parameters, please refer to the manual. Now, let's close Plaxis 3D input and move back to the Monopile Designer. Let's now generate the remaining geometry datasets. We can select multiple datasets by holding down the Shift key. We then press the Generate button to create the Plaxis 3D models. After the models have been generated, we can again multi-select all eight geometry datasets and press the Calculate button to calculate all eight models sequentially. Note that this action automatically saves the project after its calculation finishes. As we saw previously, during the generation of the models, some calculation phases are created, including the small displacements and large displacements calculation. These phases are then calculated during the model calculation phase. Finally, the program extracts the data to be displayed in the results area, such as the monopile response and the raw soil reaction curves. The calculations may take a long time, which may take up to several hours to finish depending on the number of datasets. As you can see on the right side, several response curves have been generated. This result inspection pane can be used to get an insight into the calculated projects quickly and identify potential errors in the calculation or parameterization. Selecting a specific geometry dataset in the menu highlights the corresponding curves in the graphs. The results shown on the top correspond to the monopile lateral reaction force in relation to the monopile lateral displacement at the mud line. The results shown at the bottom correspond to the depth Z over the embedded monopile length L in relation to the monopile deflection below the mud line. Both graphs presented on the first tab correspond to the monopile response for small and large displacements. When we say small displacements, we refer to the small displacement response at the mud line taken for the results of phase 2 of the Plaxis 3D calculation. In this case, the maximum displacement is intended to be around D over 10,000, which is equal to 0.01% of the outer diameter of the monopile. Double clicking on one of these graphs opens a separate window that displays a larger version of the graph. If we click on the table tab, we can find all the values generated from the chart. Here we can right click on the value to extract them by copying or saving them in a separate file for post processing purposes. Respectively, large displacements correspond to the large displacement response at Madline taken from the results of phase 3 of the Plaxis 3D calculation. The maximum displacement in this case is intended to be around a tenth of the outer diameter of the monopile. Note that this calculation is not the same as a large deformations calculation where the updated mesh analysis is required. The same applies for the monopilateral deflection at the ground level for both small and large displacements. In the soil reaction curves tab, we can view the results for 3D models at 10 predefined depths. However, you can find the full set of results in the table tab of each graph. The four soil reaction curves displayed here are the row soil reaction curves, which means that they are neither normalized nor parameterized. Calculating the models gave us the results for the monopile response and the soil reaction curves. However, our final objective is to generate the depth variation functions for the shaft and the base. We can do that by selecting all eight geometry datasets and pressing the parameterize button. Here, the soil reaction curves from all selected models are taken into account in the calibration process. This procedure results in the generation of the file calibrated.dvf within the projects folder. In our next video, we are going to cover the verification of the calibration procedure by visiting the analysis and the results mode.